Welcome back to the Night Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Uh, Richie, we're going to go over everything Greg Shiano said today on his Game Week presser for Ohio State. We got a uh, rack renovation update for you guys. We got a Dylan Harper recruitment update for you guys. Let's just start right off the top here. Uh, Greg Shiano had his presser this morning talking about Ohio State, about the bye week. Uh, just Give us some high-level thoughts on, on what he said today in the presser. I mean, half the questions were a little questionable, but <laughs> uh, I feel like you guys all kind of said that on the message board already. I'm, I've seen YouTube comments, too, about him. But um, I did ask him about the, uh, the fake punt situation last year. I thought that was a little interesting to see just kind of his thoughts there. He did admit that it was kind of their fault for not having an edge defender, and that's kind of why they ran it. So he, he kind of just x the whole thing, saying it was not the fake punt at all that caused the whole heated argument, I guess you want to call it, between him pointing and yelling at Ryan Day and vice versa. It was more so his guy on the sideline and getting surrounded by – one of his guys getting surrounded by a bunch of Buckeyes, and he knew that was going to be trouble. But uh, it doesn't seem like there's uh, too much bad blood. I know people were kind of – Looking for it, I was curious too, just based on everything that happened. But um, spoke pretty highly about Kyle McCord. Spoke very highly of Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, said he's just super dangerous. He's one of those skill position guys you got to keep an eye on. Uh, he, he did admit that he did. Uh, he was able to watch them on TV a little bit. I don't know if it's talking this bye week specifically or just throughout the season, but uh, he did say that he was able to watch them on TV. So he did a little TV scouting, as he called it. Um, there, there wasn't really a whole lot talked about Ohio State specifics, and that's kind of the way he likes it. He likes it all under the, under the radar type stuff. Don't give away any strategic advantages and don't give them any bulletin board material. Um, and that's, that's kind of what his press conference was all about. Um, he did talk about his team too, coming out of the bye week, talking about Gavin Winston's progress, um, talked about, uh, the replacing Tyreen Powell because he's, he's no longer in the rotation, obviously. Um, he, he did mention Mo and Dion as the two guys that are going to specifically step up. Uh, I don't think that's really a secret. He did say some of the younger linebackers are going to step up too, but he didn't mention who. If you had to guess, it's probably Jameer Wright Collins, who's going to miss that first half though. And, um, Timmy Hinspeter, Moses Walker. Um, but they do have a plan, a plan in place of how to, re- um, replace Powell's production. And that's really it. There wasn't a whole lot said today. It was like a, a whole lot of words, but not a lot of substance if you want to say it like that. Yeah. What did he, did he have anything to say about defending a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. who might be the best receiver in college football? Yeah. We, we asked him about it, but he kind of just pushed it to the side. He did just say, uh, he said he's one of the best players in the country or arguably one of the best players in the country. Um, you could just say he's a real professional. He called him a professional. And whenever Greg says that, he kind of means like, Hey, like that kid play at the next level, which I mean, we all kind of, know. Um, I'd argue Marvin's, one of the top Heisman candidates right now, just based yeah. on his production. It's been insane. But uh, he just said he's very dangerous. He's a skill posi- a really good skill position guy. Um, he kind of just, like I said before, he kind of just tried to shy away from giving him any type of bulletin board material whatsoever. And um, that was re- that was really it. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of uh, New Jersey ties to this Ohio State team. You got yeah. Kyle McCord. He's from South Jersey. I know he went to school in Philly. But he's mm-hmm. a Jersey guy who Craig uh, coached his dad when he was at Rutgers, too. Kyle McCord's dad was a backup yeah. quarterback for Rutgers. You obviously have Davidson and Knusson, who was committed to, mm-hmm. to Rutgers at one point from Union. His brother is Desmond. He's the safety on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's a few other guys I'm forgetting. But um, in terms of McCord, did he mention anything about McCord being banged up a bit? He had a... a a heavily taped ankle mm-hmm. after last week's game, and he had a significant limp. Did he mention anything about that? No, he didn't talk about that at all. He he just said how McCord is basically improving each week. Um, I did find it interesting because someone asked him about recruiting McCord, and he he did say he reached out as soon as he got to campus, but he was already kind of like set in stone to Ohio State. And then uh, someone asked him about Davison as well, um, and he basically said Davison has and. Uh, college football championship aspirations and that was kind of i guess that was more towards when davison entered the portal this offseason versus davison as a high school kid um but yeah no he didn't really say much about uh mccord and yeah you, you're right he uh he was a ga back when um mccord was a freshman at Rutgers. 
yeah, we'll have a lot more on this game coming up this week. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, it's McCord's banged up. They they don't really mm-hmm. have a like they don't have a great offense when you compare it to offenses offenses from Ohio State's recent past. Mm-hmm. But I think they have their best defense they've had probably under Ryan Day. So it'll be a very significant challenge. Um, I saw a stat recently that four of the top eight defenses in college football are in the Big Ten East. Um, Rutgers has faced Crazy. one of them already in Mich- Michigan. They face uh, two others the next uh, three weeks in Ohio State and Penn State, and we're the other. So we're in uh, pretty high regard there. Um, I guess let's uh, move on to some basketball talk then. Recently, you got some intel. I know a lot of people have asked about this, about you know what's going on with the rack renovations. We were told there would be a master plan it's coming soon. Mm-hmm. What are you hearing about the rack renovations um, in terms of new details and and the latest uh, beat on this. So let me pull this back up. Um, Talked to someone earlier last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was. Um, Finally got got to talk and sit down and talk to them about everything. It sounds like the plan is to do some renovations within the next year, some renovations. Now we're not talking about the whole giant crazy plan that's in place and all the artist renderings that we've posted on, on our Twitter. And uh, I could probably link it in here somehow. but yeah, there, there, there's a whole plan to do this whole facade and this and that. They want to extend the front and blah, blah, blah. But the priority from what I was told is that they want to get a club area. That's club seating, number one. That's that's the big priority because you're, you're going to need it. Like you need some kind of nice seating for special guests and all that stuff. Um, because there, there really isn't anything right now. Right now it's either sit on the court, which everyone loves, of course, or sit in that weird, oh, I don't even know, the what the hell is it called? It's something with like a A Mezzanine. or something. No, like that weird section that used to be 118, but it's not. It's like that weird it's one, two, three atrium. rows of seats. Yeah. No, it's like those three rows of seats behind the basket, whatever they're called. I know what you're talking um, about. Yeah, uh, there, there's insert corporate sponsor name there, uh, or those seats, uh, or the ones above those that are even kind of stranger too. But the whole plan is to get some club seats in there. That's That's a big priority. And it sounds like that might happen as early as like this upcoming, not, I shouldn't even say off season, I guess, because this season didn't even start yet. But you, you know what I mean. This off season after this season, so twenty twenty four summer slash fall winter, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and it sounds like some stuff's going to go on during the season too. Um, we know that that's part of the plan, and obviously bathrooms are a huge issue as is, and they want to figure out something there. Um, I don't know where these club seats are going to go exactly, or where they're going to start, or what's going to go first. But it does sound like they want to get something done within the next like year and a half, year year or so. Um, other than that, uh, there was I was talking to the guy and my source, and he kind of said there's a tiny chance that they could just redo, get rid of the rack completely, and make a whole new arena. Tiny chance. So I I say that with like quotes because it's a very 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 tiny chance. It sounds like that's very unlikely, but it's not out of the question either it's not a zero percent chance like there is a small 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 chance that it could happen but doesn't sound like that's very likely and uh other than that they're kind of just they're they're waiting to uh till this season's over kind of and then they'll go from there and that's all going to be part of the master plan it sounds like that it's supposed to supposed to be released in summer it was supposed to be released in fall and just kind of keep getting delayed over and over again um and as soon as that master plan comes out, it sounds like Pat Hobbs is going to join us on this podcast and kind of break it down for us and talk about what's what and what's priority and what's not priority. And uh, it sounds like renovating the rack is a super priority at the moment. I know a lot of people are going to ask this. So in the very mm-hmm. unlikely scenario that a new arena does go in, highly unlikely, would that be in Piscataway? Would that be on Bush Campus? Would that be downtown? Any sounds idea where like- that would go? Yeah, if, if they are going to do that route, which again, unlikely, it sounds like it's going to be right where the parking lot is and they're just going to shift everything and just kind of be like, all right, hey, we'll, we'll play here for now, but you're going to build a new one right next door and it's still going to be on the, on that campus. I don't think they change anything from that aspect. Now in an ideal world, perfect world, that, uh, what is it, that the hexagon or whatever the hell it's called they're building? The helix. The helix. I knew it started yeah. with an H-E-X. Um, <laughs> H E and the X is at the end. I know how to spell. I'm not stupid. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that would be the perfect scenario. That make it your own little MSG type thing where the arena's right there. It's perfect. The train station's there. You you want to come in from New York, get off the train, you're there. You want to come in from from hey from South Amboy where I'm at, and I'm on the train, I'm there. Like 
different train route. Yes, I know. Again, not stupid. I know my routes. I know everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it would be the perfect ideal scenario, and that would be great, but that's just very unlikely. And again, even a new rack is unlikely. It sounds like they're just going to renovate this old bad boy and uh, got that, uh, that allure to it, you know? Yeah, I think we've talked about this scenario enough. I, I want to stress it again, though. This is extremely <laughs> unlikely for those who yeah. are like, "Oh, maybe they're actually they actually mean it's going to happen," but no, that's no, not the case. It's very unlikely. So you're you're stuck with the good old rack that has the speakers on fire and the asbestos over here. And... <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. I don't think that's well. The speaker was on fire. That was serious. Yeah, that was something that actually happened um, yeah. this past season. But hopefully that is the last time that happens. Um, yeah, you also got yeah. a little before we talk about Dylan. You got a little intel on where Rutgers sits on the Adidas pecking order as well. So you want to talk about that? Yeah. So apparently, um, they're at least for basketball. We don't know what the aspect is for football, but it sounds like basketball wise, they are one of the tier one, tier A, tier S tier, whatever the hell you want to call it, the top tier for basketball in terms of Adidas uh, sponsorship. Now they haven't announced the deal yet. Technically, it's not public information, which bizarre to me how that's how that works because like that's the whole point of like oprah request and this and that you're supposed to just be able to like hey as soon as it's public that's it done but they're clearly wearing adidas gear they're clearly wearing adidas gear for every sport um and the new the whole new adidas gear too sounds like they might have new uniforms as well for basketball but that's it's gonna be very similar i'm assuming just they're gonna swap a different adidas logo on it instead of the the one that says like adidas under the logo it's just gonna have the three stripes that's it blah 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 but it sounds like they're like in the top tier, um, whether that be top 10, top five. Uh, I was told top 10 personally, um, but that means they're going to get better gear. They're going to get more shoes and stuff. And and you kind of see that start to leak out a little bit in like the uh, in some of the recruit photos, too, because like you saw the crazy. What were they called? The crazy eights, I think they were. Um, or the crazy one piece, the Dame, Dame Lillards are floating around now. Um, and that's just from the official visit photos. And that's that's like that next tier of Adidas. So I'm sure you'll see James Harden's. I know Anthony Edwards has an Adidas shoe now too. Um, but I, I do think, I, no, I shouldn't say I think, I know that they're in the top tier of Adidas for basketball. In terms of football, I don't know where it sits exactly. And we'll kind of wait and see that. I know some of you have DM'd me saying like, okay, that's cool, we're Adidas and all. But then you see Dylan with a bunch of Nike photos and stuff. and. Technically, Nike could sign him as an athlete if they wanted to, and he could still go to Rutgers. It's happened before. It's happening yep. right now at other schools. Um, but it, it does sound like um, Rutgers is top-tier Adidas right now for the time being. Awesome. Uh, so uh, we kind of talked about Dylan Harper news. What's the latest on Dylan Harper? So this is coming out of Kansas's camp. So the Kansas uh, Rivals website. Um, my guy over there, Shay, he's uh one of their one of, one of the best recruit, basketball recruiting analysts out there. But he uh he was doing some digging and trying to get some info, and it sounds like Dylan will not be visiting, will not be visiting Kansas before making a, a decision. Now we've been told basically he wanted to visit Kansas, and that was kind of, we we kind of actually reported that this summer that he wanted to visit Kansas, but his mom was very against it. It sounds like, and it sounds like mom wants him to stay close to home. Like any mother would, hey, stay close to home, do this, do that. Like, I, I don't want you far away from me. And she wants him to attend Rutgers. Um, there were conversations in the summer that, like, everyone was talking about how the Kansas visit was going to take place. We, we reported it. Then Joey Donovan reported it, too. Um, a bunch of other sources then reported that and blah, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. Um, that he, he did want it to take a visit to Kansas. Now, mind you, he could still technically take that visit to Kansas. But it sounds like right now that is not going to happen. And it sounds like he's probably not going to sign during this early period either. It sounds like he will make a decision, though, this winter. Now, the latest rumor that we've been told, and I, I've told you this off the pod, and I, I've told our website, too, on the round table, um, it sounds like he might make a decision this December at the City of Palms Classic down in Florida when he's playing a certain someone named Dace Bailey. So, mm. um It'd be very interesting. It'd, it'd be intriguing, too, to see how that works. Uh, because I guess technically you could sign and just say, like, hey, don't announce it, please. I want to announce it on my own terms. And that's kind of what they were going to do with Jim Michael Davis. But that ended up, I don't even I don't even think they announced Jim Michael Davis. Um, he just was on the team one day, and that was it. But he, he obviously signed in the early period. Um, they just never announced it, which you could do 
but I feel like stuff like that is so hard to keep under wraps and it's going to leak out eventually. Um, but it does sound like he will make a decision this December. We've been told he wants to take other visits, but it doesn't seem like he's going to take those other visits. And Rutgers being not only his last visit, but his last two visits, if you count that unofficial during the football game. Yeah. Um, so that, that's huge. And I, I, I do think between that, between Duke getting Cooper Flagg, who we've reported Dylan does not want to play with at the college level, the fact that Duke's pushing B.J. Edgecombe, who's number five in our recruiting rankings in the shooting guard, would kind of take Dylan's spot almost for them. Um, Duke being out of it actually till su- since summertime, which I think we've reported too. And now Kansas probably not getting a visit. That just tells – and other two are – like we knew Indiana was out. We knew Auburn was kind of like just, just there. Mm-hmm. Um, just all signs point towards Harper being a Scarlet Knight. I'm very confident in my pick. I've never been more confident than I am today. Growing more confident as the days go by, it's just it's just getting a little annoying that he hasn't done, done it yet. I know yep. he's one of ten of the or one of three of the top ten that have not committed yet. So it's not that crazy, but it's just he's been long rumored to Rutgers for so long. It's like just do it. So. Yeah. Um, again, he's going to do it on his timeline. I think he wants yeah. to feel ownership of this. So I, we all urge you all just to be patient. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that we have heard that makes us feel like things aren't going to end well eventually for Rutgers. It's just let him have his moment. Let him have his timeline. Mm-hmm. Just let him handle the situation however he wants. It's the only yeah. opportunity he's going to get to choose a college. Most likely I doubt he's going <laughs> to spend more than one year in college. Mm-hmm. Um, so just preach patience. Things will yeah. work out. Just, uh, it- see it out it is interesting and you you pointed it out to me and i just tweeted it out like he, he said like on his uh at the camp the wooten camp it's like straight w's no l's this season we're going undefeated except maybe palm city of palms classic and it's like wait you just you just guaranteeing yourself an l against ace or like <laughs> i don't i don't know what you're saying there like and it's just that's all he keeps talking about is the city of palms classic and it just leads more and more and towards that rumor i just said that he might end up deciding at the city of palms classic so, yeah, we'll okay. see. Um, so again, like I said, we'll have a a preview, a game preview this week with an Ohio State writer who you guys yes. might all be very familiar with. Um, so stay tuned for that. Is there anything you wanted to hit on before we head out of here, Rich? Uh, no, I'm looking through the board right now. I don't think anyone had really any questions. Um, Brian Ferentz is out. That's interesting considering Rutgers. Yeah. Well, not out yet technically. Um, it's not going to be retained for the 24 season, but he yeah. is going to finish out the season, which is kind of the best case scenario for Rutgers, honestly. Like, you're going to get a guy who's got one foot out the door, who's terrible. They're playing their third string quarterback, it sounds like, soon. They yeah, have their it's... top two tight ends out. They're a disaster. Rutgers should win that game, in my opinion. Yeah, but 3.30 start, too. Defense. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that helps, hurts, really. I don't really know what to think of that. It is what it is. It's a way. So, yeah. who cares? But, uh, and then, um, I don't know. Are we, are we going to talk hoops this week? This week, um, we should yeah, do a season a preview. Um, why don't we do that Monday morning? Why don't we release our uh, season preview episode Monday morning? The game, obviously, um, Monday night to kick yeah. off the season is Monday night. So I think it'll be a good primer for everybody leading into the season. We'll give our season predictions. Um, sure. Give our predictions on who leads the team in scoring, rebounding. Mm-hmm. Uh, team MVP, all that good, all stuff. That good stuff. Yeah, cool. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, buy tickets. There's still a bunch of them available. Like, um, mm-hmm. it's one of your only chances you'll get to see them in out of conference play. We said it before. I think out of conference play is sold out. I believe, if not very, 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 very close. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, there's tons of tickets left in this. And if you're going to the game, I know the alumni association's having a pregame party at Trent Social, which is like. 100 yards not even maybe 50 yards across the street yep so definitely check that out and uh yeah we'll have a. that's, that's kind of it that's all i really got now, kind of a boring monday it's a boring monday uh but by week as yeah. as the week leads on it'll get more exciting um as this game gets closer because i think it'll be one of the better home game atmospheres uh that Rutgers has had in a while yeah. i know in 2021 when ohio state was here you know that line ended up at like 14 and a half so yep. 
the line it opened up this past weekend at 18 and a half and circa it opened at 20 or 20 and a half i'm not sure if it moved on FanDuel at all mm-hmm. uh, it was the first line all season honestly for me that wasn't an immediate bet i feel like it was probably not uh it was probably about fair um mm-hmm. now if it gets over 21 that's when things kind of change for me but right now i, I think that line's kind of fair um but yeah, that that Ohio State game in twenty one, um, I think I talked about this. Basically, by the time I got to my seat, because the busing was so bad, uh, mm-hmm. getting from <laughs> the rack lot, yeah. it was already like fourteen nothing. Because I think we threw like a pick six early in that game, and then they had the long touchdown. So the game was basically over before I even got my seat in the first quarter. So hopefully, yeah. uh, a little better performance than that this year. I think it will. But yeah, I think so. I think they'll be yeah. competitive. All right, guys. Well, thanks right. once again for listening. Uh, this is for, for me and Richie. This has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast. Signing off.